Hello everybody, I'm Andy Phillips and this is Iron Concepts number 49. Today, let's talk about power hammers. I love power hammers. Now for me, working at Big Blue, I get to forge under a power hammer rather often. And while I'm not out in the shop every day, I still enjoy facing these forging challenges that'll come up on a fairly regular basis that you have to overcome in order to achieve my goal, even if that goal is self-inflicted. Furthermore, I've gotten the chance to help with some of the improvements to the Big Blue Hammers over the last few generations, even had some of them up. And that's an awesome thing to see an idea go from concept to testing and then into production. After seeing so many hammers roll out the door and the little improvements happen year in and year out, it's easy to ask what could be better about a tool like this. And I often ask people, if you could make a power hammer do anything, what would you make it do? How would you make it run? And if you've ever thought about emailing me in response to one of these videos, this is the question I most passionately seek input on. You see, power hammers are the first step to automating our process. This is the first rung on the ladder of having more control over our medium, and this is why I'm so passionate about them. And that kind of opens up a can of worms, because it's natural to fear automation, of course. But that really is a subject for another time. Uh, just take my word for it for now. It's, it's all going to be okay. Unless, well, uh, never mind, never mind. Anyway, moving on. I think that as the hand hammer and anvil are the beating heart of a traditional iron shop, so the power hammer is the beating heart of a modern iron shop. But if the power hammer is some great step forward for us as metal workers, as people who actually push and move iron around, then why have we stayed on the same rung of the ladder for so long? And what is the true form of a power hammer? Has the best incarnation of this tool been built yet? Realistically though, was the best hammer the first hammer ever built? Or is it the simplest, the most simple trip hammer, or the largest hammer, or even the hydraulic amalgamations that are intertwined with industry? Was the ideal form of the power hammer the nasal, or maybe it's its steam-driven brethren? The self-contained hammers, perhaps, or, or even the abstraction therein, which is where we sit, the utility hammers. I think that moving the work from human muscles to iron and electricity or steam is a fundamental step forward in such a way that it's natural for that step to be taken a thousand times over. But let's think about it like this for a second. The power hammer is the first step on a staircase. And this staircase moves us away from the ground floor where only human effort and backbone get the job done to a place where we have leverage over the task that we do and can use that leverage to shape our vision. But when I ask the question, what is the greatest power hammer ever? I typically get case specific answers that the SAMAC hits faster, the Chambersburg hits with the most control. And that means that's the best hammer for you, but it doesn't mean it's the best hammer for everyone. But I think those answers tell you how far up the staircase that someone can go or where they stand on it. But I think the best first step really is the step that everyone can take. It's the root of the tree that branches off into all of these different specialties. Let's look for a second at the little giant, because the road that I'm, that I'm heading us down, it would seem only natural that that's where I would point. And the little giants, they were everywhere. And they were, and I emphasize were, at one point affordable. The way that they work is self-evident. And they really do get the job done, albeit sporadically sometimes, and with a staggering lack of features for that matter, too. But the little giant was amongst a family of mechanical hammers that wasn't without issues. Thus, they aren't made anymore. Except, in a way, they kind of are. And this is where we come to the tire hammer. True genius. It's the open source evolution of the little giant because you couldn't make your own little giant. But a hammer like this, a mechanical hammer that's completely fabricated, beats them hands down as long as they're well-built. 
So here's why I think that the tire hammer and fabricated homemade hammers like it are the greatest power hammers ever, and why I think we should say thanks to the army of people that make them. Fifteen or more years ago, for a blacksmith shop to make the investment to take that first step, even a little giant, a 25-pound little giant, was an investment in both time and money that would require a span of time to recoup that investment. Not many shops could do that over the course of a few jobs. But realistically, one way or the other, you could argue it however you want to, but realistically, there were a lot of professional shops even that didn't make that investment. But the tire hammer sets that step so close to the ground, and it's a tried and true first step. The cost is so low, too, that most hobbyists within a few months of doing things on the side can view this as a justifiable investment. And that's why my nomination for the greatest power hammer of all times lies with the lowly homemade tire hammer. Not because it's the only hammer you should ever have, but it's that power hammer that lifts everyone up. Now, this of course is great for the second greatest power hammer of all times, because no one wants to stay at the bottom of the staircase for long. Go blue. All right, but that's it for me today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the drawing. Comment and subscribe. If there's anything you want to talk to me more in depth about, you can email me. My email is in the description below. So until next week, thank you, and bye.